Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this time around we'll be using Photoshop Elements to make this multicolored portrait. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and, of course, hit share as well. Don't forget to subscribe. And also, to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, look for my complete training course, and that's right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. This easy multicolor portrait project uses a few standard tricks, blending modes, and some layer masks and stuff to achieve this interesting portrait look. We'll start this off with a brand new file. I'll just close that down. And then File New, Blank File. I have mine set for the default Photoshop element size, which is 6x4 at 300. Choose OK. And I'll just dock that right there. There we go. There's our brand new file. Now we need to bring in our three pictures. And I have those up here in a folder with some model shots. And I'll go up here to File. I'll place these in. Now the pictures I'll be using in this video, I'll have links for these. And you'll find a link from my projects page down there in the description. But we'll use this picture first. Choose Place. Just put that one right there. And let's do another one. File Place. We'll use that one right there. And Place. There we go. Just choose OK. And let's place our last picture here, File, Place. And I'll scroll down a little bit, and there it is right there. OK, this is kind of our left picture here. This one is our right picture. Just hide that and hide that, and this one will be our center picture. There we go. Now, obviously, they're all different sizes, so let's work on this image over here first. Just hide those. And I'll get this about the right size. What I want is that that hat towards the top of the page up here and then the hair down towards the bottom of the page. So to bring up our control handles, just do a Control T keyboard shortcut. And then grab that bottom right hand corner, pull that down. And just about there so that the hat is just short of the top and the hair is just short of the bottom and place her right over about here somewhere. These don't need to be exact, just kind of, you know, kind of in the, this position. Let's now do our right hand side, and that is this girl over here. I'm going to hide that one. Now, she's obviously facing the wrong direction, so we need to flip the image here. We'll do that first. Go up to Image, come down to Rotate, and then down to Flip Layer Horizontal. There it is. Let's bring up our top picture here, and I'm going to pull this picture up to the, above that one. There we are. And again, do the Control T keyboard shortcut. And this time I want to match the head size to this size over here. So let's grab a corner and pull that out and reposition and kind of work back and forth here until you get the picture about the right size. It doesn't need to be exact, but it looks like that's about right. The eyes are on the same level, chin's on the same level. Maybe just a little bit about like that. Looks pretty good. Okay, so there's our second picture over here. And the last one, let me just close that one down. Last one is this picture here, it's kind of hiding in behind. I'll just pull it over here to the right hand side again. She's too small. Pull this to the top. And same thing, the Control T keyboard shortcut, grab that corner and let's pull this picture up until she's about the right size. And again, just kind of visualize this until you get it looking correct. And that looks pretty good right there. And she'll be about centered. And then it's a little bit lower than the other ones. All right, so this is the right stacking as well. This image is on top. And then the cowboy hat image is, is the second one down. And then the bottom image in here is the bottom on the left-hand side. Now that we have this done, we need to clip out this white background that's around the image. We'll do that real fast. Just use the lasso tool over here. I have my feathering set at one pixel, and then let's just start right down here, bottom left-hand corner, and I'll make just a quick little lasso right around the figure here, right around the hair, and then up around the hat, just like that, and then clear down around the right-hand side. Again, you don't need to be really super accurate on this one, just, just a little ways outside of the figure. 
straight across the bottom. I missed a little bit right there. We'll fix that in a second. Right here where it says add to selection. I'll just do a little bit like that. Add that in and there we go. Make sure on the right layer, which is this layer right here, and there's our selection. Let's now bring up the Refine Edge tool. I have mine set here for the overlay, as you can see. There it is. I'll put it right here, and I'll have the size set at 50, which is good. All these I have left at the default settings. And then simply come in here and paint right around the edge, just like that. And then Photoshop Elements will come in and do a real nice job and give us a nice clean edge on that. And just work your way around. Let's get all the edges, look for those little white spots and get those white spots out of there. And just go clear around. Again, this is a real fast technique. doesn't need to be super accurate because we're doing so much on the images that it's not really going to show if there's little errors, little spots, so you can be pretty quick on this. Now to double check, let's just change our mode here. Do it on black, and that looks like there's a little bit of white right there. Let's fix that. Looks fine. Go back here to the overlay, and then we're going to be outputting this to a new layer with layer mask. And then choose OK. There we go. If I hide the background, you can see she's now on a clean background. OK, let's hide that layer, move on to our next one, do the exact same thing here on this layer. And I'll just start this and do this exact same thing as I did on the last one. Just do a quick selection right around the figure. Again, doesn't need to be super accurate. Right back to your start point, back to Refine Edge and then come in and simply paint along that edge and let elements do all the work for you. Let's move this out of our way and we'll go ahead and just finish this. This is going really fast and just quickly right around the edge. There we go. Looks good. Take a quick peek on black a little bit right there. There it is. And back overlay. And once again, set this new layer with layer mask. Choose OK. There it is. Let's hide that. Look to our last layer right here. Same exact thing. We're still on that lasso tool. So we'll just start right down here at the bottom and do a quick lasso right around this portrait. There we go. It's kind of roughly following that shape. Back to the refined edge. Same thing again. Just come in here and go over these edges. Notice that I do this in little short bits. It seems to work better instead of trying to do the whole thing at one shot. It seems to work better if you do little shorter movements on this. And just work clear around. If you miss anything, just go back and catch that. There we go. As you can see, it's a real fast trick on this. Doesn't need to be super accurate. Okay, let's double check that against black. Missed a little bit right there. That's good. Missed a little bit right there. A couple little spots in here, maybe a little more along that edge. Looks good. And back to overlay. And then back to new layer with layer mask and choose OK. There it is. OK, now we can bring those layer mask layers up and we can see our basic position. That looks pretty good. We'll adjust and modify this if we need to. I'm actually going to be pulling her down just a little bit. This has a little bit of white at the top up here and a little bit on the right hand side. We can quickly catch that. That's because we moved around that we didn't catch that with our layer mask. So it's on the layer mask side. Click over there, look for that light blue outline. Black will hide that, so let's just set our colors to black at the foreground. Grab the paintbrush and a little larger brush, I think. And just paint right across that line and then right down that side. And that cleans that out. Okay, there we go. Maybe a little more right across the top. Looks like I could use just a bit of that. 
There we go. All right, that's looking good. Now, if you want to at this point, if you want to be able to come back onto these images at this point, then I recommend making a copy of these so you can fix your layer mask again. So let's go ahead and do that step. Copy of that, hide that one. You'll see why in just a second. Copy of this layer, hide one. Come down here, a copy of this layer, and hide that. Okay, now I'm going to take one copy of each. Just move those up to the top up here. All this stuff down here, this is all back up just in case I want to go back and make adjustments. I have that saved in those two different steps. So we won't be using this any longer. So it's just saved as a backup. Okay, we're back up here. Now on these, right click where the name is and choose Simplify Layer. That gets rid of the layer mask and cleans the background out and leaves just the image. Right click, Simplify Layer, and then right click and Simplify Layer. That's why I'm saving these layers in case I need to go back and fix that layer mask, I have those layers available. I've just lost the layers up here. We don't need those layers any longer, the layer mask any longer, but it's nice to have it available in case you want to fix it in the future. Okay, now we're going to convert these to black and white. Take our top layer first, enhance, convert to black and white. There it is. Now there are several different versions in here. Infrared, newspaper, portraits, scenic, suburban, and vivid. Find the one that gives you a good contrast. Looks like urban and portrait are basically the same. Vivid is possibly too bright. Infrared actually looks pretty good here. Newspaper is no good. I think I'll use infrared on this one. You can actually change any of these things down here to get an exact look on this. But I think that's a pretty good look. Choose OK. That's fine. Okay, next picture right down here. Exact same thing. Convert to black and white. Let's try that infrared again. And let's check scenic, urban. There's no good urban portrait. I think here the portrait is a little bit better. Choose that one. Depends upon the image and the lighting and so forth. Okay, our last image down here, same exact thing. Convert to black and white. Let's look at portrait first. That looks okay. Infrared, that's too bright on that one. So portrait, urban, vivid. Let's have portrait again here is the best one. Choose okay. There's our three pictures. All right, at this point, you can look at our basic layout. Looks pretty good. I want her a little lower than these, and that's fine. Maybe I'll we'll move her up just a little bit, just a touch. Maybe about there, that's okay. And let's see, looks fine. Let's now add in our color on these. And we'll do that with adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. We're on the bottom one right down there, as you can see. Where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, make sure that, that is selected and choose okay. Now click on colorize. There it is, you can see that's added some color in here. Move saturation up to about 80. I'll just type in 80 right here. Move the lightness up a little bit. And we're getting kind of a nice red coloration in here. I'm going to pull this one clear over to the right hand side. So you, have, you have two reds, left hand side and right hand side. So I'll go to the right hand side on that one and I think that looks pretty good. So clear to the top, saturation at 80 and lightness right around plus 45. Looks nice for this one. It won't be exact on all of these, but it'll be real close to this. Okay, let's close that down. Go to our next picture. This is the girl in behind right hand side. Go up to layer and new adjustment layer. Hue saturation again. Make sure that this checkbox is selected. Choose OK. Click on colorize. And let's sit in those settings from before. That was 80 right here. And we had 45 right there. That should get us close. And then pull this over into the blue range. Just find kind of a nice royal blue right around here. So this looks pretty good. 237. We can always come back and adjust these colors later if we're not quite happy with those. So looks good. Okay, last one. That's our top layer up here. Same trick. Go up to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Check that checkbox. Choose OK. Colorize. Set the saturation at 
80. Let's set our lightness at 45. And this time, move this right in between that blue and that red. About halfway between the blue and the red. Right around in here. Kind of a magenta right there is pretty good. I'm using 290. We may adjust that though. Okay, close that. So far, so good. Now, let's bring our background in. That's that white, so I can see that. There they are on the white background. And let's take a look at this layer right here. Let's set the blend mode for this right down here to hard light. And that allows us to see through into our other portraits in behind. There we go. So we can see the hat in behind here. We can see the edge of her up here. And we're getting these kind of nice multi colors in here on this portrait. Now at this point, we're going to come back in and do a little bit of tweaking. I think she's a bit too dark on the right hand side. So double click on the adjustment layer. Let's bring her lightness up just a little bit so she matches the others in value just a touch. Looks pretty good. I think she's okay on that side. Let's go up to our top adjustment layer. Double click. There we go. Let's see if we can adjust this any. Little lightness adjustment. Oh, just a little bit more saturation on that. And notice if I move the color back and forth, I get massive changes now on this one. And I want to see a nice range of colors in here. I want to see some of the red, some of the magenta, and some of the blue. It looks like right around there is right where I want to be. In this case, 263. But you have to actually manually move it back and forth just a little bit to really fine tune that. And that looks pretty good as well. And there we go. There is our multi-color portrait. Again, it's pretty fast, pretty easy as you see, using some real basic techniques, but for a very interesting kind of combined portrait effect. Don't forget to click on that like and share and subscribe buttons and also look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.